friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using three different Hello Bluebird sets, including Word Buddies Woodland, Leaf Play, and Dear Friend. And I've stamped my images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my bears, and I wanted them to be brown bears, so I picked E42, E43, E44, and E47, and I think this is a really good combo for bears. It gives it a little bit of like a an earthiness to this brown tone that I think suits them well. So I started with that E47 and laid in some shadows on my baby bear. Since he's facing forward, I'm doing the shadows on equal sides, both on the left and the right, and then also a little bit um, at the bottom of the head to kind of distinguish that from the chin area. And then I'm blending out with the E44, and then I'm going to take that down to the E43, and I am going to squeeze in four shades. I just like them to look really dynamic, but you could take off the E42 if you wanted and just make the E43 your lightest. But I'm going to take that E42 and finish off the rest of their bodies. I'm going to leave a little space on the belly bear and also the area around the muzzle. And for that, I'm going to use the E41 because I wanted that just to be a little bit lighter. For the mama bear, I just wanted to alter her slightly so that she looked more like the baby. So I'm going to give her a little line around her muzzle just like he has. I drew that in with a pencil first and then I went in with a Memento Tuxedo Black marker to outline that. And then I'm going to begin coloring in the same way. I'm just going to be doing her light source a bit different since she's facing, first of all, she's facing away from the camera, but she's also facing toward the left. So I'm going to put her shadows mostly on the right hand side and also outline the bottom of her body to um, create that darker look down there. And then I'm going to blend out down from darkest to lightest, just like I did on the baby. So right now I'm using that E44 really scribbling over the edge of that E47 so that I don't end up with a dark line there. I want my blend to be nice and smooth so it really looks like soft fur. And then I'll come in with the E43 and continue to blend that out. And uh, I'm gonna squeeze in all four shades on her as well. So I'm making sure to leave some room mainly in the center of the body is that's where I think the light would be hitting. Um, since she's facing away, I think the light would be hitting on her back for this particular scene here. So once I have that E43 laid in where I want it, I skipped over the belly again so I could keep that area light as well. So now I'm gonna come in with that E42 and continue taking that toward the front. I'm gonna leave that belly white for now and use the E41 to color that in and also to finish up the muzzle. And then I am going to do a second layer on her off screen. I didn't on the baby because he was smaller, but since she was a larger image, I went ahead and did that second layer to smooth everything out. And then I took my colorless blender and just pushed out any of the little mistakes that I had made. I kind of went outside of the lines a few places, so I just pushed that color back inside. And then I'm going to take the R11 and R20, and I'm going to color in the baby's ears and also the mom's and give them both some rosy cheeks, starting with that R20 and then tracing around the edge of that with the R11. I'm going to keep those pink shades out for right now because I want to use them on the breasts of the birds, but first I want to color their bodies, and I decided to make them robins. So I chose E21, E23, and E25. I wanted another brown tone, but nothing that would be similar to the bears, so I went with this one because it's more of like a reddish brown. Um, so I thought that that would uh, add a nice bit of contrast there. 
and still keeping though in a really neutral color palette. And then I'm gonna add in the R22 and start their breast with that part, um, doing the R22 back toward the tail and then blending forward with the R20 and then finishing with the R11 close up by the face and also giving them some rosy cheeks with the R20 and R11. And for their beaks, I'm going to grab Y15 and just dot that in. It's such a small area, so just the one shade. I'm going to use the mushrooms to add a little pop of red on the scene, since there's going to be a tiny bit of red in the pattern paper that I'm going to be using later on. So I used R24, R29, and R39 for that. Just use the R39 down at the bottom right blend it up with the R29 and then the R24. And that also ties in to the Robin's red breast. And then I'll use E70 for the underside of the mushroom stems. Also added a touch to the white dots. And then for the tree branch, I wanted something that would be really different from the bears and the robins. So I used the E70s. I pulled E70, E71, and E74 for the branch. I'm adding a shadow on the underside of each branch with that E74. And then I'm going to blend up with the E71, still sticking close to the edge because I want there to be a nice highlight. So I'm leaving a lot of white space. So once I'm finished with that E71, I'll grab that E70 and finish off with that one. And then I'm going to do a second layer on this as well and then leave that to dry for just a few seconds so that I can add some detail over top. If you do the detail work too soon, it will just fade in with the rest of the colors because the inks are meant to blend. So if you let that dry for a little bit, then you'll have some details that will stand out nicely. So I'm just adding some wood grain texture with some swirls and dots and dashes to really give it that look of tree bark. And then for the leaves, I wanted something that was a little bit olive toned. So I went with G40, G43, and G46. These have a really uh, kind of gray undertone to them. So I think that works perfectly. So I used the G46 to draw a line down the center of each leaf and then also added kind of some veining on the under part of each little section. And then I blended that out with the G43 and used the G40 for the highlight. So the two separate leaves are from Leaf Play, but they just looked very similar to the leaves from Dear Friend. So I went ahead and used them together for this card because I wanted a couple that were not attached that could look like falling leaves. Just to add some extra movement to the scene. So once I had the first few done, I decided it would be a lot quicker to just use each marker uh, one time. So I went and did the part with the G46 all by itself and then I came in with the G43 to do the blending and then I'm just going to color over the white spaces quickly with that G40 to finish them off and then I'm going to take a black Sakura jelly roll pen and I like to scribble it off to the side to get it going because sometimes it doesn't really look bright and shiny which is the look that I want because I want to add that little bit of glossiness to the eyes of all of my critters. So once I have that done, I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I have that on my Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat, and then I'm pressing some Distress Oxides onto an acrylic block 
picking them up with a paintbrush and it just kind of painting an organic looking background. The first shade that I used was Shabby Shutters and I started in kind of like a backwards L shape because I wanted that area to be darker and then the top left corner to get lighter. So now I've added in some peeled paint and I'm just gonna continue painting over that and going back to my shabby shutters and uh, adding some of that lighter green up in the top corner now. And I'm just kind of bouncing my paintbrush around. I want it to be very texturized and um, not to really be able to tell like which part is the grass and which part might be other leaves in the forest. Um, just trying to create a little bit of uh, like a you know a scene in the woods. I added some mowed lawn for a bit of contrast, but it was a bit too bright. So I mixed that with the other two shades to kind of dull it down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my heat tool and dry this back so that I can add another layer just to create some extra depth. So once that's dry, I'm gonna go in and add layer number two. And this time I'm adding like even more little spots and dots and things. Cause like I said, I really want it to um, look like a distant forest backdrop. And I want it to kind of resemble different leaves and foliage in the background. I'm also going to do some splatter detail on that and then dry that back one more time. And then finally, I'm going to take this kind of coppery gold shade from my Starry Colors uh, watercolors from uh, Kurataki, and I'm going to splatter those on the background. And it took me a couple tries to get that going because I had the paint a little bit too thick to start. So I added a little more water and then got some nice fine droplets dried those and then I'm gonna lift that up to the camera so you can see how that catches the light. Just adds a nice little bit of shine in that background. The pattern paper that I'm using today is from the Echo Park Let's Go Camping 6x6 pad. So I knew already that I wanted to use this little tree background. I thought that was really cool. And then also this kind of army green and red plaid. I'm going to die cut those with the gallery frame number two from Hello Bluebird. And I'm going to pop the frame apart and swap the inner portion. So you can see I can make two different cards using these frames just by swapping those out and get a slightly different look. And for today's card, I decided to go with the one that had the plaid on the inside portion. So I'm going to flip those over to the back side and grab some scotch tape. I'm going to tear off a piece that's going to be long enough and then tear that down the side to make two different strips. And I'll tape those together where those two pieces of the frame meet up so that I can use those as one piece and pop them up with foam tape. So I've added my foam tape and also added a strip across the bar that goes across the center so that everything is well supported. So I peeled off the release papers and then I'm going to line that up over my watercolored background and pop that down into place. Next I want to stamp my sentiment and I'm using the Typed Every Day stamp set from Hello Bluebird stamping in Lawn Fawn Walnut Ink. And I'm masking off part of my sentiment. The sentiment actually reads just saying hello, but I only want the part that says just saying. So I just mask that off each time. I stamp that down three times to get a nice bold impression since the font is super fine. And then I'm going to set that aside. I actually took the die that says hello from the gallery frame six, and I was going to die cut it out of this craft cardstock as well, but I decided I wanted more contrast. So I'm gonna do something different um, in a minute. But for now, I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card. I'm using another piece of that craft cardstock, 
and stamping the other little bear from the Word Buddies Woodland. I also have a couple of leaves from Leaf Play and the sentiment is from Leaf Play as well. So I decided to die cut the Hello die from some wood grain cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And then I'm going to glue my focal panel to my card front using some Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. So I'm just going to make sure that that is on there nice and straight and hold that down into place until that adheres. As the background did warp a little bit from all that watercoloring and drying. I'm going to trim off a tiny bit of the back end of the tree so that I can fit it under my frame. And then I'm going to peel off the release papers from all my little bits of foam tape that I've added on there to make sure that it's well supported. I'm just dropping that into one of my Twiddler's Nook embellishment trays so that I can have all of my little bits contained until I'm ready to take them over to the garbage. And I'm going to tuck that tree branch under the frame on the left and have it overlapping the frame on the right so it looks like it's kind of coming out of the window here. And then I'll add my little baby bear sitting on top of that branch. Next I'm going to take the mama bear. I've added some foam tape to the back of her and I'll add a touch of regular glue where she's going to be overlapping some of the pieces. I'm going to have her standing in front of that tree and kind of looking like she's pulling down on that leaf to see the baby bear. And then I'll tuck a robin up in the top right corner in the tree branches. I'm going to add my two mushrooms down in the bottom left corner. So I'm just making sure I have them where I want them, having them spaced nicely apart. And then I'll add my flying robin right below that tree branch. I'm going to wait on those two leaves until I have my sentiment down because I want to put one in the top part and one in the bottom, but I want to make sure I have my sentiment where I want it first. So because these die cuts are super thin, I'm going to use my reverse tweezers to help me get them positioned correctly and also using that Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to add the glue to the back um, because it has that super fine nozzle. So I'm going to start with the O. I'm going backwards. I just find that easier because I can make sure that the O is spaced right with the right hand side of the card. And then I'll take the rest of the word. So my sentiment is going to say just saying hello. Um, I just thought it would be nice to have an everyday kind of card that you could send to anybody. But I think this would make an adorable Father's Day card or Mother's Day card if you um, just made it a little bit more feminine, maybe with some different pattern paper. So I'm going to trim down that banner and I still... I die cut that sentiment with the Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment Banners to create that little bit of a banner. I'm going to tuck that under the edge of the frame just like I did with the tree branch and I did pop that up on some foam tape. Then I'm going to add one of my falling leaves right above the O in hello and the other one I'm going to add over um, between the robin and the mama bear. I decided not to add any stickles since this ended up being more of a masculine card, but I do love that little bit of gold shimmer paint in the background. So there is another peek at the inside, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.